A better route Chapter 82 Naruto and Hinata had gathered the council, including Hinata's father, and Ma and Pa, who had been a bitch to summon, in the main meeting hall so that they could ask for Hinata to be able to come along with Naruto during his training. They knew it was a bit of a long shot, but they just had to ask. Abito wasn't used to someone else starting a council meeting, making him very curious as to what all of this was about, Naruto, what's so important that you need to gather all of these people just get permission for it? Naruto took a deep breath and got right to the point, Hinata-chan and I have been discussing the idea of having her accompany me to Mount Mayaboku when I start my sage training. We'd like your permission to go through with it. Hayashi was first to speak, you want my daughter to go with you to a mysterious mountain that's extremely hard to get to for an unspecified amount of time? Do you know how crazy that sounds? Naruto scratched the back of his head in embarrassment, well, when you put it like that. Hinata cut in to try and improve the situation, father, how many people are given a chance like this? It would look very good for a future clan head to go to a place of such prestige. Hayashi couldn't argue with that point. Luckily he wouldn't he wouldn't have to as Pa had asked, why do you want this girl to go with you Naruto boy? Wouldn't it make training harder to focus? Naruto shook his head, no, it would do just the opposite. Hinata and my family are some of the biggest reasons I'm doing this. She'd be a constant reminder for me to work harder. Ma swooned, oh Pa, it's just like when we were young. Pa rolled his eyes, I'm not even sure I remember being young. Well Naruto boy, if that's how you feel then I have no choice but to say yes. The biggest thing sage training requires is focus and determination. If this girl can give you that then who am I to object? Hayashi was still very unsure about this, I just don't like sending my daughter away like that. We don't even know much about Mount Mayaboku. Pa shrugged, it's a sacred place with some of the most powerful summoning animals known to man living there. What else do you need to know? Hayashi sighed and rubbed his temples, I am I the only one who's having any kind of objection to this? The rest of the council seemed just fine with the idea so Hayashi said, give me a day or two to think about it. I just need to be sure before I let her go somewhere so mysterious. Naruto and Hinata didn't object. The fact that the was even think about this at all was a miracle in their eyes. They were gonna take what they could get. Kiba opened the door to his house and immediately called to his mother, Hey mom, how's Mtayo's pup doing? Tsum walked in the room and told him, little Soku's doing just fine. I'm glad you've brought him up Kiba, because I need to talk to you. Kiba sat down on the couch and gave her a funny look, what's the problem? Tsum sat next to him, it's not really a problem, more like something I think you haven't considered. Giving Mito this dog is a big deal and I'm fine with that. She's a lovely girl and a very big help at the vet's office. However, she's also the future head of her own clan. Kiba, do you see yourself marrying this girl? Kiba gulped a little at hearing that word but said, actually, I think I do. Not right now, maybe in few years though. Tsum nodded, that's good but like I said she's the future head of her own clan. You've shown interest in becoming a clan head as well and I can honestly say that it's either going to be you or your sister. Kiba, if you two get married then one of you will have to join the other's clan. I don't think Mito's going to be able to join a clan since she's the last of the Senju line, one of the Leaf's most historic clans. You'll have to join her clan and while you will still be able to use the clan's jutsus and teach them to your kids, you won't be able to become clan head. You two need to sit down and talk about this and decided what you want to do. Kiba had never imagined something like this could be so complicated. Becoming clan head had always been a personal goal of his and he really didn't want to give that up. On the same token though, Mito meant the world to him and he wasn't sure he could imagine life without her. This was really something he was going to have to think about. 
Naruto and Hinata had been called into Hayashi's office which meant he must have made his final decision. They'd done everything they could to convince him that this was a good idea, but everything was in his hands now. Hayashi looked at them from across the desk and finally said, though it hasn't been easy, I've finally decided that I'll let my daughter go with you to for your sage training. Hinata jumped in joy, thank you so much daddy. Hayashi allowed himself a small smile, don't thank me too much just yet. I do have one condition. Naruto wasn't sure he liked that look in his eye, you do? Hayashi nodded, the only thing I ask is that you let Niji go with you as well to ensure Hinata's safety. Naruto was pretty sure he was trying to preserve something other than her safety but Naruto wasn't about to tell him that ship had already sailed, you okay with that Hinata-chan? While Hinata wasn't happy about it, but she knew better than to look a gift horse in the mouth, I suppose that'll be fine. Does Niji-kun know about this already? Hayashi had of course told the boy, I asked him if he'd be willing to do it and he was more than happy to. He's actually getting everything prepared for his leave of absence right now. Which reminds me, I've got a few things to prepare for this myself. I'll see you later Hinata-chan, Naruto-san. Naruto mumbled, what is it with these guys and calling me San? I swear they just do it to annoy me. Hinata gave him a small kiss on the cheek, that's actually exactly why he does. He says that the fact that you're dating me gives him the right to pick at you. After sharing a small laugh, they left to go and tell everyone the good news. It wasn't exactly what they'd wanted but Naruto was at least glad that he got to have Hinata come with him and admittedly Niji wasn't bad company either. Sage training seemed to be getting more and more exciting by the second. Mito had been sitting around the house for a while reading one of her father's books, The Tale of a Gutsy Ninja, and was enjoying it quite a bit. She was surprised to find that her father could write more than just adult novels. There was a knock at the door and marked her page so that she could go answer it. She was very happy to see it was her boyfriend when she opened the door, Kibakun, did you come to hang out for a little bit or is there something you need my help with for Soku? Kiba wasn't there for either, actually, I needed to talk to you about something. Can I come in? Mito motioned for him to come inside, sure, what did you need? Kiba started out as simply as he could, I was talking to my mom about Soku and something came up that I don't think either of us have really thought about. Mito couldn't imagine what the could be, okay, what is it? Kiba honestly felt kind of stupid for not thinking of this earlier, I don't know if either of us have ever said it, but I think we've both had the thought of us getting married run through our heads. Mito didn't see where he was going with this, well yeah, what about it? Kiba just decided to blurt it out, if we stay together one of us is going to have to give up our position as clan head. That stopped Mito in her tracks. She'd never thought of that. They were the only two clan heads who were dating at the moment. Naruto wasn't considered a clan head because the Namikais weren't a clan and the Uzumakis had never officially been a clan of the Hidden Leaf because they'd been the founding clan if the Hidden Whirlpool. Kushina had chosen not to restart clan as she knew it would attract too much attention to any family she had. That left them as the only clan heads dating. Mito molded over in her head, I know that I can't give up my position because I'm the last Sanju and the village is never got let that clan die unless they have to. Kiba already figured that out, which means that I'd definitely have to give up my position as head of the Inazukas. Mito hated to ask this of him, would you be willing to do that for me? Kiba was expecting this to be a really hard choice but it took him less than a second later, yes, I would. Mito had been talking. I know that you might need time to, wait what? Kiba gave her a small smile, I said that I would be willing to give up my spot as clan head for you. I love you Mito-chan and at the end of the day clan head is just a title with a lot of responsibility. Hana's gonna do just fine and I can still teach any kids we might have some of the Inazuka techniques. It's not even for sure we'll even get married yet. 
There's no way I'm gonna give up the chance to be with you for something as silly as this. Mito was shocked at just how much he cared about her, thank you so much Kibakuen, I love you too. They leaned in for a kiss and a bark was heard, arf. Mito's jumped a little bit, I didn't even know Akamaru was here. Kiba just had to laugh, he's the size of a freaking wolf, how did you miss him? Mito pouted, just shut up and kiss me.